Free soloing is one of the most challenging and dangerous sports out there. You either get it right the first time or fall to a painful death. So before you try to monkey your way up that wall, you're going to need a lot of training and not just physical. How do free climbers overcome their fear of falling? Think you have what it takes? All right, tough guy, put on your climbing shoes and whatever you do, don't look down. This is your body on free climbing. When we talk about free climbing, it's not just some promotion at your local climbing gym. It's an extreme sport that requires stamina, endurance, and mental strength. <laughs> While some of the pros go ropeless, known as free soloing, many free climbers still tether themselves in case they fall. The difference with rope climbing here is free climbers have no assistance when it comes to upward mobility. It all boils down to balance and determination. So how exactly does one train for such an incredible feat? As free soloist Alex Honnold puts it, if you're a speed climber, you need iron legs and amazing lungs. But for bouldering, it's all about strong fingers and arms. Before you do any free climbing, you better train hard. Free climbers build and maintain their strength through regular exercise. We're talking press-ups, planks, leg lifts, running, skiing, cycling, and more. As Alex puts it, if you really want to be a good climber, you'll need to climb a lot. Strength is only half the battle. Flexibility is just as important. It will help to reduce injuries and to complete complex techniques like stemming, where you push against two opposing surfaces to balance, or a mantle, where you push down on a hold and bring your feet up to meet your hands. Better brush up on some yoga. While you might think having jacked arms and a firm grip are the keys to a successful climb, I wouldn't skip leg day if I were you. So, you're all trained and ready to climb. First things first, plan your route and look for footholds. Finding good footholds will help keep you balanced and give your arms a break. And if there isn't a good foothold, you can try smearing, where you rely on the rubber of your shoe for friction against the rock. Always try to keep your feet still and directly below you to maintain balance. You'll want your heels low so you have plenty of contact with the wall. The more rubber on the rock, the better. You don't have to be as jacked as Sylvester Stallone to be a good climber. The real key to a successful free climb is balance. Keep your arms straight so your skeleton takes on the weight. When you bend at your elbow, your muscles are doing unnecessary work to hold you up. Try to focus on your hips. Keep them pushed up against the wall so your weight is over your feet. This will allow you to lean back, making it easier to grip. Okay, looks like you're halfway up the wall. Just another 457 meters to go. Feeling a little sweaty and tired? It might be time to take a break. Even if you're trying to beat a speed record, resting is critical both on and off the wall. Climbing when fatigued will wear you out. No matter how much you power grunt like world champion climber Adam Andra. It might be a good time to pitch a tent, have a protein-rich snack and admire the view. Wow. Or, if you're trying to climb this mountain in a day, as Emily Harrington did, well, you better keep moving. Okay, you're about 610 meters up. No pressure. As much as you want to look down, try and resist the urge. When Alex Honnold decided to get an MRI of his brain, 
Neurologists presented him with a series of images designed to disturb and excite him. Impressively, they found that Alex's amygdala, the fear processor of the brain, didn't show a strong response to the stimuli. Through countless hours of climbing, Alex has learned to overcome his fear with a well-honed regulatory system. With that said, for this final stretch, don't let fear get the best of you. Climbing can push your heart rate to between 120 and 180 beats per minute. Stay focused, breathe, and keep calm. If your palms are as sweaty as mine are right now, put some chalk on those puppies. Only a few hundred feet to go. You got this. Just one last push. Woohoo, you made it. Before you go taking selfies and admiring the view, be sure to stretch. Even the top climbers can suffer injuries. You might have carpal tunnel syndrome, tennis elbow, knee meniscus tears, or the dreaded climber's finger. Can stop them. Ah! That's when your finger tendons are strained or torn, causing your fingers to swell up and stiffen. Free climbing can be pretty debilitating. So, you might want to book that massage you've been putting off. If incredible feats of strength get you going, think you could run a marathon without training? Well, that sounds like a challenge for another episode of Your Body On.